But okay, okay, just throwing this out here before we get into the game. If you are near the edge of the map and that you're everyone is dead, okay, and you are holding the ball, you need to throw it off the map. Please, for the love of all that is good and holy in this universe, throw it off the map so it will respawn somewhere. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Genesis Live Gameplay. I've paused the live gameplay just to give you a brief insight into the film you're about to watch. Basically, I was searching with my teammate Shuffling Manu and Hawkeye, got matched with three random teammates against an almost full party. Five of the enemy team players are 2.0 or are very close to 2.0. Extremely experienced, extremely skilled players. Only one of the enemy players was negative and even he had quite a few kills. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what 2.0 means, that basically means two kills for every death. Now, I would like to say that regardless of the length of this film, it was very, very enjoyable to edit down, to break down, and give you tips and tricks on how it plays out. It is close, brutal, I'm the only person who goes positive on my team, and I have the most ball carry time. It's insane, and I hope you learn a lot from the tips and tricks and various things that play out in a catastrophic way in this game. Alright, I'm going to go for the oddball, because I know you all are better slayers than me. I'm going to go straight for the, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go. Or wait, are you? Yeah, you go for Mantis. I'll go for Raya. Oh wow, I chose the wrong roll out. Oh well, that's okay. Oh, it's next to Wraith. We're rocket launcher and Wraith are next to each other. Oh dear, we need to get this. Nice job. Nice job. Double kill. Grab the grab the ball. Throw it over here. Throw it over here. Teammate, throw it over here. Throw it. Hey, the wall's right here. We need to move away from this. We need to move away from this. Oh, man. Just spread out around me. Just spread out around me. That's all that matters. Just hey, come over to where I am and just sort of spread out around this area. I'm going to be in the base. I'm going to be in the back of the base area. Just, we only need to defend. We only need to defend. Don't worry about vehicles. There's this whole back of the base area to stay around. I, I got the ball back here. They're charging in! They're charging in! I need help! Wow, they're all over the base. I'm about to die. Yeah, they're all here. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm, they're, they're surrounded me in the base. I can't really do anything. Unfortunately, I feel like they're going to do this exact same thing to us. So rewinding the film just a little bit back to the point where I died behind the base with the oddball. Right here, what I was commenting on, they might do the same thing to us. Basically, I was worried that they might hold up in a defensive position behind the base just like we were. Seeing as they wiped up our team so easily, I was very worried that if they maintained such a defensive position, we wouldn't be able to get into their ranks. But it seemed like some of the enemy players were a little too focused on getting kills and not focused enough on the objective. You'll see what I mean later on in the film. The second thing I want to mention real briefly here is to bring your attention onto how I failed in my throw behind the base here. Now I'm well aware that regardless of any throw I probably could have made behind the base, the enemy still would have possessed the ball a few seconds later, and that is the case. But as you can see right here where I throw the ball, I throw it sort of up and into the air, but I throw it way too late. By that time I'm already dead, and unfortunately the oddball is programmed much better than rockets or grenades are. I don't know if you've ever been stuck by someone as they've died, but I've, I've had that happen s several times to me, um, where someone throws a grenade out of their dead body at me and sticks me. That is not the case with the oddball. If you try to throw the oddball as you're dying, um, you will literally, it'll just fall out of your body, like you see here in the third person angle. You need to throw it before your shields go dead, preferably long before your shields go dead, so that you can guarantee that you make a throw. This is also true in Ricochet, the oddball, or the ball behaves very similarly in Ricochet, you, or the same exact in Ricochet, and you want to use that same strategy here, and later on you'll see some better examples of me using this throwing strategy. Dude, I need help. He just stuck me. Oh no, he didn't. Nice, push in, push in. Got double kill. Let's move, let's move to the ball. They threw it across the map. They threw it across the map. Ball's across the map. They go, it's going to fall weak. 
The guy going for the ball is a weak. He's one shot. The guy's one shot on the ball. Throw it over here to this base. Whoever gets it needs to throw it. Oh dear. The, okay. Oh yeah, we're, they're over here, guys. They're over here. We need help over here. We gotta start shooting these people, guys. There's four of them here. I need, to, I need help over here. I'm dead. Yeah. I have four people on me. I'm not going to survive this. Yeah, I need help over here. I just want to pause and mention very briefly here, if we can go back to that portion of the film we just watched. Look how I'm charging forward here. It's on 50% um, film speed. Watch how I'm moving towards the ball here, and a bunch of enemy radar dots appear on my radar. You can see three enemy players across the way here who back up. And watch my radar as two of my teammates end up dying. And yet all four of those dots still maintain enough distance around the corner for me to go for the oddball and actually throw it across the map. This is what I'm talking about in terms of the enemy being too concerned about KD and not concerned enough about the objective. Out of the several slight examples in this film, this one is by far the best example of the enemy team going for KD and trying to stay alive over going for the ball. I'm not saying that you can't try to go positive, as I am clearly trying to do in my gameplay right here, but at least some of your team members have to be going for the ball, and if they're not, you have to recognize that as a teammate and go for it yourself. Wow, we are all really playing not smart right now. Our teammates are really being annoying. Is there a mantis or something that spawns over here? Like... We grab the ball. Oh, we did grab it. Move to the base. Move to the base. Everyone move into the base. Control the doorways. Control the doorways. Oh, man. The, 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 the block here. Move out. Throw it. Block here. Throw it before you die. Our block here should always throw it before he dies. Man, I, I have like six people over here on me. We need to move here, like, wow. Well. Let's move back to the space. Let's move back to the space. Oh dear, we need to kill these guys in front of us. Oh dear, yeah, I'm moving forward. We need to kill these guys in front of us right now. Wow, they're all around us. They're all surrounding us right now. I, I wow, I threw it, but wow, I don't, I don't get it. They're surrounding us literally. I threw it across the map. Yeah, yeah. Throw it to me over here. Throw it to me over here. I'm, I'm over here. Oh man, dude. I'm gonna throw it across the map. I'm gonna throw it across the map. I need help. I threw it across the map to you guys at the base. You throw it up and get it away from the... Yeah, we're all in a good defense position. How did our ball carrier die? As you can see right here on the right-hand side of the screen, I throw the ball. My teammate picks it up, but instead of ducking behind the rock to his right, he runs across the map, tries to get in front of the base. This is not a good place to be because it is very easily naded by enemy players. You want to be behind this rock area that I'm looking at right now, you're going to be behind this because you can easily maneuver around it to be angled away from these players over here and these players who are in this rock structure in front of the base. Five minutes remain. Throw it off the map, throw it off the map. Wow, dude. We could seriously win this game if we just, we just did that basically. Get 
Wall carrier. Wall carrier is weak. One shot up here. Wall carrier is weak. I got him. I got him. I have ball. I'm going to move into the tunnel. I'm going to move into the tunnel in the back of the base. There's like, already guys back here. There are already guys back here in the tunnel. I'm going to be ready to throw it off the map. I'm getting an attack from up top. I need help up top. Wow, I'm going to have to throw this. I got it. I have ball. I have ball. Keep defense. Get up top and keep defending. We're about to get swarmed. I may not be able to make this throw. I sincerely, yeah. I'm throwing now. I may not be able to make it. I think I did. I think I did. I made it off the map. I made it off the map. Now let's pause here and go back a little bit to the part where I threw the ball, but not necessarily off the map. I recognize it being pushed behind by an enemy player, and my teammate unfortunately isn't able to take him out. But I wanted you to notice how well played out this is, how I fake out, throw the ball back, the enemy player goes for the ball, and I'm able to take him out with a headshot. I um, really want to be using that situation whenever you can. This happens so fast, really wasn't able to see it. And moving on to the second part, where I actually do throw the ball correctly. Watch my radar. This is absolutely astounding. As you see almost four or five, possibly even six enemy players charging me on my radar. And I want you to notice exactly when I choose to pull the trigger. I jump to make sure that I'm getting the extra added on distance of my jump added to the throw of the ball. And I r run forward so that the ball will have the extra momentum of running forward. Run forward, jump, and throw right before my shields go dead and my gun comes back up. That's how you know your ball is going to go on along its trajectory. Is if you, when your gun comes back up, you can see your gun again, then boom, you know the ball is going to head where you throw it. So that's just how you throw the ball, and it really worked out for us in this situation, even though it wasn't necessarily the best ball respawn. All right, we're going to the next one. Yeah, they are going to be all on it. It, it's, it was a terrible respawn. Yeah, our team, my teammate's not even paying attention. He's being light rifled in the face, and he doesn't even back up. We're going to need to push now, like we have got to... Ball carrier's weak on top of the base. I killed him. No, it's not just him. There's another teammate there. Wait, let me attack this guy. Get on the edge. Get on it. Throw it to me. Throw it to me now. Throw the ball to me now. Got it. Uh, way over my head, dude. Oh, dude. Okay, dude. That was that was a fumble right there, dude. Like you you can't be doing that. I threw it off. Okay, wow. Yeah, that was a fumble. I just threw it off the map because I thought we were all gonna die. We didn't die. So right here I'm going to attempt to bridge a rather awkward sentence structure that I made in the live commentary or live callouts I had. Basically I go from, oh that was a fumble, that was a terrible idea, to, oh you guys are on the new ball, um, it was reset, I'm distracting two of them over here, great job. Basically I thought it was a fumble, and it was kind of a fumble on my teammates part, throwing the ball over my head, but ultimately throwing the ball off the map like I did. Um, was a good idea because just a few seconds later we are swarmed and I wouldn't have been able, been able to take out these two guys you see on my radar alone. So it was a good idea to throw the ball off the map. But my um, transition into this commentary of I'm distracting these two players, what this means is that in squad DLC it's 6v6, I'm distracting two third, or I'm sorry, one third of their team over here on this side of the map, which means that possibly five of my teammates were be against their four teammates on the new ball reset. These players, including myself, are literally across the map, and if these two players kill me, all that's going to do is help me, because I'm going to respawn near my teammates who are closer to the ball than these two enemy players. Okay, it's over by you guys. It's over by you guys. I have to, I'm distracting two of them right now. Wow, I, know, I hope you guys get that ball, because there's two guys not over here. Get the ball and throw it, throw it. Get the ball and throw it back. Throw it back to Hawkeye, right here. I got it. I can't make this jump, I can't make this jump. For whatever reason, I can't make this jump. I need help over here on the ball. I'm throwing the ball across the map. Throwing the ball across the map. You need to get to that ball now. Oh, there. Yeah, that's it. The man, you gotta get that kill, dude. But that's, this is game right here. This is game right here. Yeah, that's it. That, that, that's game, that's game. 
we, we had it. We had a chance and we blew it. No, no, that's game. They're pulling it back through the building. We're not going to be able to get into it. All right, here I really have to call myself out for being such a downer. My personality type tends to be more t focused towards being realistic around a situation and not sugarcoating it. But in this situation, I really need to maintain positivity. And one thing I wanted to point out is that I did misread the time in the bottom right-hand corner. I could have sworn it was less than a minute left to go for whatever reason. So as soon as the enemy team gained the lead, I was almost positive that because they had the ball in this back base area that we would not be able to break their setup to get the ball. But as I previously stated in this video, the enemy team was playing very dumb with their setups around the ball not necessarily watching the ball itself and actually just going for kills. And so that allo allows us to get away with some pretty insane crud at this point in the game. I know, I know, I'm pushing, I'm pushing right now. I'm pushing the ball carry right now, but it's, our teammate just not paying attention at all. Yeah, you see, they threw it out to the front of the base. We can't, we can't get over there in time. He's gonna have to throw it. Our teammate, whoever's grabs it has to throw it right now. I killed the ball carrier. Seriously? Now you just heard our teammate Boldface Broom 3, who by the way hasn't said a word up until this point in the film, say, no one cares, okay? And I'd like to add a little bit of context. This player has been in the game since its beginning. He's had his mic plugged in since the beginning that the game started. And it is now, at the, one of the more critical points in the game with only a minute and 20 seconds remaining, with only a few seconds to determine which team wins or loses, that he decides to start throwing crap like this. The number one thing I want you to take away from this before I go into some of my rant is that you need to immediately or try to immediately mute these players, preferably during your death screen. Okay, the few seconds that you lose of gameplay will be worth it. For sure. Only if you're down to like the last two or three seconds of hill time or ball time in a King of the Hill or ball game, does you really don't want to do that. Otherwise, definitely take the time to mute these players. It will save you a world of pain. They're not worth dealing with at all. We're trying to debate. It's The logic will not be there on the other end. Trust me. So the following is a little bit of a rant. If you want to skip through it, then that is absolutely fine. This is directed at Boldface Broom 3 himself. Um, Boldface, I'm going to give you a huge benefit of the doubt here. Play devil's advocate and try to explain it from your viewpoint. I'm guessing that you just come into this game ha to have some fun and that you misinterpreted the urgency and um, inclined tones of our voices as basically us raging. But seeing as you speak the same language, English, and it was very clear that you did so, it was very hard for me to believe that you could misinterpret what we're saying as raging and not just simply trying to win the game and call out. It is beyond my comprehension that someone could be so selfish of their own enjoyment of the game to the extent that they don't even want other players to try their heart out because it inconveniences them with a few voice waves over their network and into their microphone. When you have the option to mute someone, you should do it. They're not going to care whether you do it or not. But clearly you are too young to know how to do so, and thus you probably are not old enough to be actually playing this game. Now I'm all for younger players, you know, 15, 16, play players who are slightly under 17 playing this game, but you are clearly not of the maturity level to be playing this game. And one of the main reasons is that you will be hearing crap constantly if you don't mute people and you will be entering this crap into your brain and then spitting it back out to other people later on in other games because you don't know any better. Just the statement, nobody cares, is something you heard and you're repeating because it sounds cool and makes you feel better individually and it makes you feel like you, you know, really own them or whatever it is, okay? And I'm here to tell you that you can go rot in a hole until you gain some maturity and some understanding that having an enjoyable experience on your own is not the most paramount thing in life. You need to understand that working as a team and together conquering and winning as a team is much more enjoyable and will always be more enjoyable than playing basically on your own by yourself. This is why I never understood non-competitive customs because the winning 
um, factor is just not ne nearly as there as if you're communicating with an eight-person or six-person lobby. Um, it's so much more powerful. And for you to jump in and ruin that is just, just it's immature to a level I can't even begin to describe. And I pity you is the bottom line. So guys, that's my rant. Uh, let's move on to the gameplay. Move the ball, move the ball. Are you kidding me? Our teammate who just grabbed the ball is an idiot. Right here, Hawkeye died. Right there, Hawkeye behind you. I muted Boldface. He's an idiot. We're four kill. We're four. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it right now. Ch shuffling. Wait, you need to need them. Keep moving. Right over here, shuffling, shuffling. Throw it now. Wait, why are you not throwing it at me? There you go, there you go, there you go. Keep moving, keep moving. We're gonna have to keep, we're gonna have to keep this. Keep moving the ball. Keep, th keep throwing it. If you die, throw it. As soon as, before your shields go dead, throw it. Did you throw it off the map? Did you throw it off the map? We have to, okay, we gotta kill this ball carrier right now. Oh dear. I get, we gotta kill this ball carrier. Holy frack, you guys. I'm nading, I'm nading a ball. We need it, we need to kill, kill ball. Don't, don't go for the ball, don't go for the ball, doesn't matter. Don't. Rape. Rape. So for those of you who have watched up to this point in the video, I'm about to break down the last 60 seconds that happened in this game. I had it play through at normal speed, um, non-interrupted, with a few other angles of course, but there was a lot you still missed, and it simply is incredible what occurs in the last 60 seconds of this game, and I hope you enjoy this last breakdown. I know I loved watching and figuring out what happened. So right here, the enemy, we have actually five seconds to gain the lead, and it is uh, becomes the last minute of the game right here. So my teammate Shuffling Manu um, has the ball and ends up getting a really good um, throw as he's about to die across the map for the long bomb. And our teammate, who said nobody cares, starts trying to betray uh, the person who holds the oddball so he can get it and throw it to the enemy team. And I don't think our teammates even knew that they were getting betrayed while holding the oddball. So basically, he betrays, grabs the oddball, and throws it at this enemy player, who immediately acquires the ball. Now, let's not focus on um, this player. We already know he's a douchebag and needs to go live in a hole somewhere. But let's focus on what actually happens in the end of this film. So after this game, I'm just going to level with you guys. I was 100% convinced after contemplating it for quite some time that the final enemy player who carried the ball across this area okay, had to be the player on their team who was, who was negative. Okay, because the all the other players had extremely good KDs, or 2.0, if not absolutely 2.0 or above. Very, very good players. So the only way I could see someone making this dumb of a mistake is if they were the negative player. This, embarrassingly enough, and it would it would work out like that if it was karma, you know, our betrayal teammate throwing it to the negative player on their team who runs it across an open space for us to get the victory. But this actually, embarrassingly enough for the enemy team, happens to be a 2.0 KD player, as I will switch to him momentarily, Submission X2, who is definitely a 2.0 KD and runs the ball across an open area. I've already stated in this film how you want to set up with the ball and be very careful and watch the ball and be in a position where your teammates can grab the ball after you've died so that you don't give the ball to the enemy team. As it is, he has at least, he has 12 seconds right now that he has to get in the last 28 seconds of the film to tie us for the lead. That's not even gaining the lead, okay? So it is critical that he maintain control of the ball. And the best way he could do that with, with mo looking around, like on his, on his HUD where his teammates are, is to drop down here and move around to this area where his other teammates are so he can conversion him. Instead, he ends up crossing 
a very open space over here. And I'm not sure if he's contemplating throwing the ball off the map. It doesn't look like it. I'm assuming he just saw his teammates spawn in right here, I guess. And that's maybe what he's running for. I don't really know. But this is a devastatingly stupid maneuver for multiple reasons. But it should be apparently obvious as we go through this gameplay. So as he drops right here, you can see me across the way. And I'm just, I'm just laser focused on this kid. I, we have to kill him, okay? So I get this kid basically one shot or very, very, very weak, okay? Uh, it, one shot as he pops around the corner. Now I'm going to switch to my teammate shuffling Manu's perspective, okay? And let's switch to his perspective. Right here, my teammate shuffling Manu has just spawned and is rushing down this tunnel to try to get another perspective. And he's going to get a great angle on this enemy player as he comes around the corner and finds this player and shoots him in the head to kill him. And I get the ball assist right here as he gets that kill. Now what, what follows is absolutely insane, and I will break it down for you. Okay, my teammate throws a grenade right here, which isn't as noteworthy, but my teammate, his second grenade right here, okay, and the grenade that I throw right here, okay, you can see the grenade in midair right here that I just threw as I'm pushing up this ledge, both combine to form an explosion that shoots the ball up and over this ramp area, and this is where I, I don't even know, okay? There is a glitch in Halo 4 that when one grenade explodes, it can shoot the ball straight up into the enemy into the air and make it reset. I've seen this glitch several times. Um, this is not what you're seeing here. It is a natural um, double explosion of two grenades perfectly placed on the ball. So I'm going to see as this grenade um, zooms in here, you're going to see my grenade come in from the left right about... Uh, now, you can see uh, my grenade coming in over here and um, shuffling Manu's grenade on the ground right here. I'm going to slow it down very close. As you can see those two grenades coming in frame by frame, my grenade is going to bank off of this tunnel and land in the midst of those weapons. It's going to be kind of hard to see. But then shuffling Manu's grenade is going to land just to the right of the ball. And it's going to explode first because it hit the ground first. And mine did ricochet a little bit before hitting the ground. So Shuffling Manu's grenade blows up right here. I'm going to slow it down very slow as you can see. The ball ricochets sort of off the ground a little bit, but it's not going to go very far at this angle. But then my grenade explodes, as you can see right here, and its secondary explosion shoves the ball straight up into the air so that it actually goes up, up and over this central area, this would be normally where the Wraith would spawn if it was an oddball. And up and over everybody's head, away from the, the enemy players who are all over here desperately trying to get to the ball. And it, it shoots it all the way over here. Um, and it actually kind of glitches as it comes off this wall right here. It glitches down onto um, the surface here. And I want to switch to the perspective of the player who actually grabs the ball um, here when he grabs it. Um, my teammate just rushes in, straight rushes in. Um, I was going to switch to this guy's perspective. So this is Hawkeye, my teammate. He said that one of the highlights of this game was running straight for the ball. I'm just going to actually um, rewind the film a little bit, show it from his perspective as he runs straight for the ball as it hits the ground, grabs it, and hightails it the heck out of here um, to run away from the enemy team as the last five seconds count down, and we win the game. Um, it's just an amazing turn of events in the last portion of the game. Perfect grenades. Um, just goes to show that you can win the game at like all costs at the end here. Um, just really, really good game overall. I'm very, very pleased with the way this turned out. And a number of enemy players over here who we actually ended up killing off was um, quite astounding. I think four enemy bodies you can see here. But guys, um, if you want to stick around and see some of our after game reactions, feel free. I'll run the credits here. Um, feel free to um, stay tuned for whatever I capture or record next. Peace, guys. Ooh, yay. Lovely scenery. Oh my gosh, huge spaceship. <laughs> oh my beautiful. There's no flipping away we just did that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wow. I was so dumb then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't believe it. This uh, this uh, bold face guy. He's like, shut up, shut up. Nobody cares. What do you mean, shut up? We're about to win the game. You're like, what do you? Three and twenty-three. Shut up, shut up. And Pyro Josh wasn't that much better. Like when I upload this YouTube video, that's to anyone who's very young and watching. Don't say shut up to people who are calling out. Say shut up to people who are like raging constantly. We're not raging. We're trying to win the fracking game, okay? Seriously. <laughs> Take a hold of your balls and make something happen. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. I can't believe that actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you're going to upload that? Dude, I went 2.0. What do you think? What do you think, dude? <laughs> I went almost 2.0. Heck yes, dude. Alright, so, so how many gameplays for YouTube <laughs> did we capture? Uh, yeah. Um, like two or wait, or who got a ball? Who got a ball master? Uh, you got a ball oh, wow, I did. Okay. Yeah, I did get a ball master. That's nice. And two, two ball keepers. Three killjoys in the Wonder of Wonders. It makes me think if we had had three other really good teammates. How badly would we have destroyed them then? Like, holy crud. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't... I mean, we're looking at these players' KD. Okay, yay. You know, your KD is above 2.0 with over 120,000 kills. Okay, yay. You're 2.0 with 12,000 kills. You have almost a 4.0 KD with 140,000 kills. Oh, 140,000 kills. Yeah, I said that. And then, uh, yeah, that's a 2.0 as well. That's that's mildly negative, but that's it. Like I don't even know. That's insane. 